Seals operate in small, tight units. Unlike conventional forces with slow-moving formations of men and machines, Seals are light and fast. To make up for their lack of numbers, they engage their enemies with crushing amounts of hot lead. Overwhelming, massive firepower from a squad. It will devastate an area and they will withdraw and you will not catch them. The SEALs combat record is legendary. In Vietnam, they had a 200 to 1 kill ratio against the VC. A statistic any other unit would be hard pressed to beat. When first formed, the SEALs arsenal was composed of underpowered M1 carbines and M3 grease guns left over from World War II. These weapons were simply not up to the SEALs unconventional warfare brief. The man responsible for building the first SEAL teams, Lieutenant Roy Bohm, began the search for an outstanding combat rifle. Roy wanted the best weapons available. He went out, he examined them. He took some of the enlisted men whose opinion he valued. They got to test the weapons. The weapons they tested were the original AR-15s. Developed by the brilliant rifle designer Eugene Stoner, the AR-15 was made of space-age materials and fired a specially developed 5.56 millimeter round. Critical for the SEALs, this rifle and its new ammunition were light. Its weight, the weight of the ammunition, I mean, everything was right to make this a jungle weapon or a mud weapon such as we had in Vietnam. You must be weight conscious. Every ounce of weight you put on, you're gonna sink that much deeper into the mud. When more firepower was needed, they looked to another stoner design. A light machine gun that cut down its enemies in a hail of 5.56 millimeter lead. Gene Stoner designed many other weapons, but only one holds his name and is synonymous with the Navy SEALs in Vietnam. That weapon is the Stoner light machine gun, the Stoner 63A. Stoner LMG light machine gun. The SEALs in the Vietnam era really, really liked this weapon. The rate of fire this thing had gave it one heck of a signature. I was very careful about letting my machine gunner shoot. There was bounties on all the SEALs in Vietnam. The last thing you wanted to do was let the bad guy know who's in town. The Stoner 63 was a complete modular system. Not just one rifle, it could be fielded in six different configurations, from carbine to belt-fed light machine gun. Like the AR-15, SEALs love the Stoner because of its light weight. It is so small and so light, it can be carried with one hand. And with the removal of a single pin, you're able to take the buttstock off, turning it into a little more than a gigantic pistol, but a pistol that held 100 rounds of 5.56 ammunition and fired it at over 600 rounds a minute. Small, light, and powerful. The stoner is no trouble for a Navy SEAL to fire from the shoulder all day long. Smoking, the Stoner 63A1, the best there was. In Vietnam, there were some targets even the Stoner couldn't dent. To crack the tougher nuts, SEALs added the M60 to their arsenal. The M60 was the brainchild of a post-war project given the task of combining the portability and lightweight of the BAR with the sustained belt-fed capability of the Browning 30 caliber. When the SEALs got their hands on it, they made significant modifications to suit their swift, hard-hitting missions. The result of the SEAL modifications were a unique weapon referred to as the chopped M60. To develop the weapon, they took the buttstock off. 
removing a few pounds of weight. The bipod was removed, taking more weight off the barrel. The front sight's gone. You could actually remove the rear sight, another few ounces, which means another few rounds that could be carried by the individual for the same amount of weight. The result would be a very quick, very vicious, close-in weapon that is aimed by a man who is extremely experienced with instinctive fire. Tuck it up under your arm, walk it into the target with tracers. When on the offensive, the SEALs could rely on the M60's heavy 7.62 millimeter round to make short work of dug-in VC positions and riverboats. At 25 yards, the average engagement range in Vietnam for the Navy SEALs, we've assembled a cinder block wall, eight inches thick concrete. Behind that wall, we've set a silhouette. And we'll see what the power of the M60 can do to someone behind cover. The firepower of the M60 was considered legendary. Let's see what it did. Apparently the firepower of the M60 is not quite what I thought it was. There's still half a brick left. As for the target, he's not going to bother us anymore. When even the M60 was not enough, the SEALs turned to the 40 millimeter grenade launcher. Developed in the 1950s, the single-shot M79 could lob high-explosive 40-millimeter rounds in excess of 200 yards. The SEALs took the M79 and gave it steroids, creating a true SEAL original. 40-millimeter pump gun. It is the biggest pump-action grenade launcher, the biggest repeating shotgun that has ever really been made. One heck of a sound, isn't it? Can you imagine at night when the sound travels so much better just hearing this sound? We're scared of living daylights out of me. I'd be looking for a hole. Three in the tube, one in the chamber. Four rounds, so as quick as you can chamber it, you're ready to go again. The pump action could lob four rounds of high explosive death at the enemy in less than five seconds. Compared to the M79, it's an Olympic sprinter. To demonstrate the firepower available to the SEALs in Vietnam, a shoot-off, three rounds, 40 millimeter M79, 40 millimeter pump-action grenade launcher. Ready on the line? Fire! The demonstration is obvious. Though heavy and complicated, the 40 millimeter gave a unique punch to the SEALs in Vietnam. Four rounds of high explosive grenades as fast as you can operate the action and pull the trigger. 